I know, I know how this looks, but hear me out. I'll tell you why. I got another Raptor. It's another 2019. This one's stock. Uh, my friend Steve called me and said, hey, I have a Raptor. Uh, I don't need it. So me and Marley have been talking about things for a while and we wanted another one. And here's why. Okay, so the last Raptor we had was a 2019. We bought it at stage two and we immediately jumped to the 750 kit that we have for sale. And it did well. It made 705 wheel horsepower, something like that. But we didn't get to highlight going from stock to stage two to the GT750 kit. And so that's really why we bought this truck, to be able to highlight that progression, that, that step uh, from going to stock all the way up. So if you come take a look at this, this truck is completely stock, no modifications at all. It's got 70,000 miles on it. And we're gonna start with a flat, just a flat stock truck. My goal for this is to have it make 700 horsepower again, but I wanna do all the suspension. I wanna do some sort of livery and I wanna take you guys along on the journey. And doing that, it's gonna help you guys be able to see the progress from stock all the way up. But if not, you're gonna be able to follow along with me in steps and stop where you wanna stop or just watch it all the way through. So there's gonna be several shops we're gonna be working with along the way for suspension, for the livery, for install of the turbo setup, install of the intercooler, uh, we're gonna do bumpers, we're gonna do lights, we're gonna do a whole nine yards. And so that's why we got this truck. So we still have the Gen 3, we still have the Bronco, we've got the Explorer ST, and we're still developing on all of them. So this is just gonna be another one that we're gonna start on today, really. So the first thing we're gonna do is install the Cobb Access port and get this thing tuned on stage one. Can I get an access port? Okay, so we got the access port. We are going to connect it to the computer. And as you guys know, I have all of my custom tunes, um, I have the base map for the custom tunes. So you guys are gonna get the access port, it's gonna come preloaded with your first set of files. I'm gonna transfer these maps over to the access port immediately and take this out to the truck and we are able to get started. So we have a battery charger. Make sure you always use a battery charger on your installation and removal. So we're gonna get it charging. Now that the battery charger is on the truck, we are going to plug in to the OBD2 port. Don't forget to remove the full screen protector, which is up here. So key on. Gonna go to install, install to ECU and transmission. It matches my vehicle. You're going to pick your performance ECU tune. It's always one with your name on it, so here's mine. There's going to be another one that's grayed out that has your name on it. That's a different type of ECU, so you're not going to worry about that one. You're going to pick the one that is selectable. Pick that. Go through the warnings. So that battery charger is on the vehicle. And you're always going to go to factory back backup. Okay, so it finished flashing the ECU. Now we're going to do the TCM. So I picked my custom TCM. I'm gonna continue past this. Got a battery charger connected. And then here it's gonna ask you to back up the factory data. Always back up the factory data. Okay, so it says installation successful. Please turn off key. And we will do that now. And then hit continue. So everything has gone through. Um, in about 15 seconds, we're able to start the truck to make sure everything works fine. And then we're good to go. At this point, you guys will go logging. What I'm gonna go do is fill up with fuel. So whenever I buy a new vehicle, I like to make sure 91 octane is in it. So no matter what, I'll go to the gas station, top it off with 91 octane and run the tank all the way down and then top it off with 91 octane. So that way it's a full tank of 91 or 93 in your case maybe. And we're good to go. So let's start the truck, make sure everything's good. Okay, installation is successful. So we're gonna take off, let's go.
yeah, so this build is going to be really fun. Oh man, we're really looking forward to being able to work with all you guys. There's going to be several companies involved. Um, and then to be able to take it out on the trails. That's one thing we, we've done with our Gen 3s and our previous Gen 2s, but like our current Gen 3, it's our test vehicle. And so we can't have any downtime if something were to break. So we don't take it off road and beat it up a lot. We'll take it in the river, we'll do some trails, but we don't do any high crazy jumps. No None of those things. Um, we just, we mainly have fun around town and uh, on the back trails, but that's really about it. So this truck though, if something breaks, it breaks, you know, it's a project. And that's really why we wanted to get this. So we can take it out on the, the runs with you guys, uh, trailer it, you know, across the US, whatever we got to do, but really, really be able to have a good time. So our, our goal is to unveil this at Raptors on Rocks in May, Chuck's event. So we went last year, we did a vlog on it, um, but this year it'll be really nice to be able to have our own truck out there and be able to run it. So that's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a lot of, a lot of fun there. So today the plan is to change the oil, change the spark plugs, get all the accessories I like to get. And that's pretty much it. Pretty set up after that. I might actually take it off road after we're done changing the oil, I don't know. Actually, I think I will. We may or may not put that in here, but that would be fun. So oil, of course, is personal preference. I like to use Castrol Edge. Oh, so we'll see if they have one. So these are the mirrors I like, blind spot. I'm an old man, so almost 40 actually, pretty crazy. I'm gonna throw these on real quick. I always put them on the outside. Cool, same here. Sweet. Now I feel comfortable enough to uh, make turns and not hit somebody. Down by our house, so we always take this road. River out there. Yeah, the river's out there. 60, 70 miles an hour on this. This road's pretty much dead, so we can come up over this, and you can kind of whip it into the street. It's pretty cool. Fun stuff. So you pull the engine cover off, and that exposes the intake manifold, and you just start pulling coils off, 8 millimeter. Coils come off, then the plugs are there. Now we're about 3 minutes in, pulling the first plug, 70,000 miles. It's all right. Definitely needs to be done, that's for sure. Okay, so this is the plug I just pulled out. Can you see that crack right there? That's cracked, ceramic is cracked. So that's why I was getting a misfire. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back in. I won't torque it down right away, I'll just throw it in here. I like to do this by hand because these only require 11.1 foot pounds. All right, so this took me 14 minutes to change the plugs. The last time I did it, it took me 20. So that's some sort of progress. I now need to torque this in. This is just the engine cover. All right, so we're ready to go rip it. So this is the grab bar handle mount for the access port. Um, 
Cobb used to have two part numbers, but they went ahead and consolidated it to one, and they gave you the two different types of fittings. So this is for Gen 2, Gen 3, or vice versa. But yeah, so this will work for both, for both 2017 to 2020 Raptor, Gen 2 Raptor, and 2021 to 2022, for now until 23 is supported. So we'll go ahead and get this thrown on. Cool, so this is what this looks like now once it's installed. And of course, to adjust it, all you need to do is just loosen this up a little bit, move it where you like it, and then it's set. So it's clean, you know, it's out of the way, you can still use your turn signals. I can still grab this to get down, grab it to get up. So yeah, I like it. And then you just figure out where you wanna run the cable, but I have mine coming out of there. So when you're done using it, you can just unplug it. Take the access port out of the window, put it away, and you're all set. You're ready to use it again. Plug it in, and you're good to go. You guys want the access port mount, that's what it looks like. Um, I decided to go with the ADD Pro bolt-on bumper. I really like that bumper. I like the way it looks. I always have. Uh, Marley decided on that one for Gen 3. Um, and if you guys know me, I'm not, a, I'm not a light guy. I'm not a bumper guy. I don't really know much about those things. So I just like the way certain things look, and so that's why I decided on the ADD pro bolt on. On the rear I also decided to do an ADD bumper. I can't remember which one it was but Tyson showed me some some different options and I liked it because you can have lights in the back and so whenever we're off-roading that'll help with with uh, almost like chase lights type type look. So another cool thing that I like is the pro clip here. Um, this is one of those things where I get what I like and it's already set up so I have this this here for me but this thing is really stable. Um, you know, the phone just slides in, doesn't go through, it can't go all the way through, slide all the way down. Uh, but then when you're off-roading, it is very, very stable. Uh, we just went off-roading this past weekend, and yeah, you can see me, you know, manipulating the wheel and everything, but the phone just stays in place. So it did really, really well there, and that's another staple that I like to have in my trucks. Another thing that we, we do in all of our trucks are the WeatherTech floor mats. So WeatherTech actually sponsored us, uh, and have provided us with these floor mats and we do the rear and as everyone knows WeatherTech just fits like a glove they they fit very very well very snug the molding is perfect there is no overlap hangover nothing like that so we always do WeatherTech mats uh, truck interior wise is pretty much set up I have an AutoTech screen coming um, and we'll get that installed but yeah so far things are Moving along, I want to do a carbon fiber steering wheel. I want to make sure the heat, the heat warmer is retained. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it for the interior. Maybe do some carbon bits. I might try to find some carbon bits. I thought about swapping in the Recaro seats. That might be another thing I do, but we'll play by ear, see how it goes. I may, may run out of time, may not be able to do it, but if I can, I will. Hey, what's up guys? Good morning. So we are headed to Hammer Performance in Southern Park, New Mexico. We're actually gonna hop on the dyno today with this truck um, and pretty much wrap up the stage one stuff that we're doing. So at this point right now, it's still a stock truck. We have the access port here uh, with tuning only. So I'm gonna get on the dyno and I'm going to tune E50. I've done a couple of vlogs already with 91 octane, uh, even on 2019 Raptors like this that show the power that's being made. So I'm not gonna do that again since it's redundant. Um, I'm just gonna do the E50 tuning. So we're gonna get on the dyno and finish that up. And then I'm gonna leave my truck there with the guys at Hammer, Tyson and Tristan, and they're gonna install some bumpers for me. So we start the visual, the visual path today. From this point, we're gonna jump right into stage two and start the stage two tuning as well once we finish these bumpers. So you guys stay tuned and we'll hit you back at the dyno. All right guys, we are here on the dyno. So what we're gonna do to start off is we're gonna set our RPM on the dyno. 
so that we have the proper gear ratio. And in doing so, it's going to allow us to get accurate readings. So we're going to go ahead and spin the truck here. Okay, so what's on here right now is my E50 base map. Um, this is what you guys get sent out, same tune, same file. Uh, I've tuned thousands of these trucks at this point, so I know this base file is on, on point, it's going to be close. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the truck into fourth gear and I'm going to do a pull and see what it makes. My guess is this base file will make between 475 and 485, but let's take a look and see what it does. Spot on. 